<laughs> Hi, Mike. Hello, Luke. Good to see you. Yeah. Here. I haven't seen enough of you this week. <laughs> no, no, not nearly enough. I think, I, I suppose we could just sew our clothes together. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we did it. We did a thing together at PAX Dev. Oh, we, we should say where we are. We're at, we're at PAX We're West. at PAX. Yep. Um, uh, we did a thing together at PAX Dev, mm -hmm. uh, where we... Which is Mike's excellent show, uh, leading into PAX. Right, and uh, and then later uh, we're going to do a, uh, a an apocalypse panel. Mike and Luke nuke the apocalypse. That's right. So hopefully get out for But you're, you're forgetting something. What am I forgetting? You also dragged me out on stage in front of 2,500 people yesterday oh, right. to introduce something that you're working on. Yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, oh, I, it's right here. What? I, I, it's somehow... <laughs> Just magically appeared on the table. Uh, oh, how how did you must be a wizard? No 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 no. I leave that to you, sir. Uh, <laughs> so yes, uh, no. This is Thornwatch. It's our our new game that we're working on. Um, we're uh, we're working on a number of games that we've launched on the excellent Kickstarter platform, mm -hmm. and this is the third of three that we uh, you know had a plan a, a vision. To launch, um, it's called Thornwatch. It is with our friends at Penny Arcade, uh, who uh, the they're in our building. Like we we're right downstairs from them, so mm -hmm. we got together and uh, are making a game together. So uh, this game has a has a bit of a history. It's been uh, I mean I play tested this game in another form yeah, a few a years long ago. Time ago. Yeah. Uh, so and then you were at. Pack South and saw it again. I think I, I've seen it. I've seen you creeping around conventions now for well over a year. <laughs> I'm a creeper. Uh, uh, you know, putting hoods over people and dragging them into forests and <laughs> yes, to, yes. to demo your game. Uh, yeah. So right. So it was. Um, so well, how did, what was the original concept? Yeah. Let's then, start. Let's start before I got involved. Yeah. Right. So uh, Mike Krahulik is the artist behind Penny Arcade. Just a an absolute genius of an artist. Uh, and, but he, he played Dungeons and Dragons, fourth edition, and liked a lot of the card mechanics and didn't like a lot of other things. And was like, I want to make my own game. So he, he put together the basics of a game, which he called Card Warriors with a Z. So you know it's good, <laughs> right? Mark of quality. Mark of quality, right. And so um, he, uh, uh, and he wanted a game that was very visually vibrant and had a lot of, Focus directly on the table, as opposed to all the, you know, note taking that you do, all the record keeping, all the behind the scenes action. He was like, no, no, no I want that right there, um, and he got it reasonably far. He got it to a point where he could take it out in public, and people would play it and go, this, this is cool, this is cool. I'm glad you're doing this thing. And he was, of course, showing it to people who were already huge fans of Penny Arcade. And they were telling him, this is great, mm -hmm. right? Which is, I mean, not necessarily the best way to gain feedback, right? So um, so we moved into the building, and I said, hey, I hear you have a game. He said, yeah. And, and I, was like, I said, show it to me. He's like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, did you show it to... Did he go white with terror? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, he was like, it's like, why are you shown it to other people at conventions why am I different you're different <laughs> right and I was like well okay fine you can't show it to me now he said no I can't all right you have till Friday and I walked out <laughs> um and that's, that's <laughs> perhaps even crueler it was on a Tuesday <laughs> so and so he didn't sleep for three days no he didn't yeah uh, he just spent the next few days hanging on it with a with with a chisel right to make sure it was good anyway he showed it to me and i was like yeah there's some really good stuff here i really enjoy this um and i broke it immediately it, yeah right i and, i also broke it. yeah exactly and he was like oh man there's real problems i was like no 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 you're fine you're fine right um but i i suggested to them that they they actually make the game and they put a lot of effort into it because um they there was no way before i came there it was kind of a lark Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, oh, this is a thing we make. We don't make games. We just, this is a thing. We play with our friends. Mm -hmm. Like, you have a lot of friends. <laughs> Let them play it too, mm -hmm. right? So um, they, they, they poked at it for a while and then eventually realized they were a little in over their head, as I would be if I suddenly said I wanted to launch a weekly webcomic, mm -hmm. you know, or a daily webcomic, right? So um, 
so they uh, they came to us and said, do you want to help us make this? And we talked about it and said, yeah, but um, you have wedded it to this amazing story called the Ironwood, which is this magical forest that is infected with this horrible presence called the Ebb, and there's these Boy Scout-like uh, heroes that defend it called the Lookouts, and there's these wizard druidist animal uh, companion people called the uh, daughters that that own parts of the forest and there's there's uh, these thorn watch that come and defend people uh, who are in need when people tie knots on the tree it's all expansive and stuff like that and I want all of it <laughs> it's like because they were like oh yeah help us make thorn watch I was like no <laughs> it's like if we're gonna do that like if we're gonna do this let's do something big let's blow it out and they were like oh okay okay so we came on, and um, I brought in, um, so it was Mike and Jerry, uh, and then Mike Failauer and Kiko and a number of other people at mm -hmm. Penny Arcade, uh, and I brought in uh, Chad Brown, who's my lead developer on the Pathfinder Adventure card game and the Apocrypha Adventure card game, uh, and I brought in Rodney Thompson, who is uh, the, uh, one of the designers of Lords of Waterdeep and um, an original designer of d and 5th edition and works at Bungie right now and we just went at it and uh, we ended up in a very different compatible but very different place in a lot of ways and uh, as you mentioned we slunk around conventions until we took it to Gen Con um, and uh, came out of it going yeah it's pretty much the game we want to make mm -hmm. I was really happy to see uh you really push the idea of uh, playtesting and, and getting the community involved uh, at the shows at, at PAX East, at uh, Gen Con, and, and here yeah. at PAX South. Rather, it's been um, a big influence to have Penny Arcade because they're, they do everything in public. For them, ideas don't exist until they share them. Mm -hmm. For me, ideas don't exist until they're perfect, and then I'll <laughs> share them, right? I'm much more private mm -hmm. with with projects and right now you know every day I'm keeping like 10, 10 big secrets because I can't share them with anybody you, you are a man who likes secrets yeah whereas Penny Arcade is like we, we made this thing is it any good before they've actually like determined whether it's any good right mm -hmm. and that's that's fantastic and it's been a really nice influence on us to, to let go of some of our inhibitions oh so you feel they've challenged you in that regard yeah I don't know if they intended to but it worked right I mean, it really was uh, something where I was like, okay, I guess we're going to put a, like, <laughs> nor <laughs> normally when I would uh, do a playtest for a game that wasn't out, there would be like a curtained off area, right, or a private room, and a big sign on it that says, nobody come in, right, right, no, uh, and for them, it's like, oh yeah, let's do a playtest, we're going to drop it right in the middle of the exhibit hall. They're right in the little tabletop game area and have people come by and film it and stuff like that. I'm like, it's a play test. <laughs> you don't film. No, you, you do? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it definitely changed my outlook on the world in a lot of ways um, to, to embrace the fans. Like, we get uh, play test feedback from our fans all the time. It's just behind a firewall, mm -hmm. right? But this was like, I am right up next to you and you can tell me what you think. And it was pretty cool. Uh, I, I um, we did hundreds of hundreds of groups of this thing, and um, yeah, they gave us gave us amazing feedback. And and we came out of every convention going, I got this list of five things we got to do, and I would challenge the guys. Actually, another really cool element of it was, um, you know, with a lot of games, uh, I'll sort of take upon myself the the burden of saying, okay, we have a problem. I'm gonna go away for a while. I'm gonna come back with an answer, and I'll talk. I'll write it on the whiteboard, and everybody will listen to me. And I'll go, okay, we get it, right? In this case, I didn't even think there were answers to some of the problems I was having. I was just go, I would just go. This is a thing I don't. I don't like the way we're doing information presentation. Mm -hmm. um, now I can pull out my Edward Tufte books and say, here's here's how you visualize information, right? But I could. But instead, I would go. I realize I have visual titans sitting around me, mm -hmm. right? I have, um, and so I would say, I need to figure out a new way to do this that no one's ever done before. 
good luck. And <laughs> people would walk away and go, okay, okay, okay. And then Rodney would come back with one way and Mike would come back with another way and Mike's way he drew out in, in Illustrator and Rodney's way he, he uh, laid down in Microsoft Word and would go, okay, neither of those is right. Now let's mush them together. And It was just really different to have a, an artist and a storyteller in Jerry like right there at the beginning of the game solving problems on a daily basis. Like, Not how you're used to working. Well, everybody in my company... Um, there, every, some of the people in my companies are really visu visually smart. Um, uh, Elisa and Liz and, and those guys, just unbelievably great in that regard. But we are predominantly coming at it from the point of view of being professional game designers. Right. And um, uh, so we solve in professional game design ways. And to have artist and, uh, and story writer there the whole time solving in artist and story writer ways makes a cooler game. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I, I'm peaked now. I'm I'm really curious. So oh, we, should say, we should say uh, we did launch. Uh, we're we're, we're going to get to no, that. no. I know. I'm just saying the version that you're going to see here. Okay. Is um, this is the print and play mm -hmm. that people who are watching this can print and play. Print and cut. Do some cutting. Well, yeah. There's a there's an intermediary step. Yeah. It's really hard to play until you do some. Yeah. Uh, also, you have to make your own dice out of, you know... You can't just... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. It's close. It's close. So it's run play um, that anybody can go to uh, the site and um, get and tell give us feedback because we have a feedback form. Oh, great. There. So so if you like what you see or don't like what you see, print it out, tell me what you think. That would be fantastic. All right. Well, I... I before we talk about what's going on right now. No, no, I just wanted to say this is like this is we're doing it live. Like this is a thing. Right. I, well, I want to see the thing. I want. Okay. Uh, why don't you run me through a, a quick demo and? Sure, sure. And so you, you had me choose. Yeah. Choose let's talk about. Let's talk about you. Okay. Let's talk about you. Okay. Okay. So, um, you are. We play in groups of three to six players. One of us is the judge. I will be the judge. You're always judging me. I judge you harshly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then everybody else plays uh, a member of the Thorn Watch, which are the magical spirits that are summoned to solve problems like the A-Team. Um, right. The, yeah, you know, the A-Team of, of undead. For, yeah, of undead forest creatures. Yeah, cool. yeah So everybody picks one. So like, uh, uh, I gave you the green heart, but you can also be the blade or the sage. Okay. Or oh, all right. So, uh, green heart's cool. Mask. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a male and female version so, of each, each uh, character. So there's the male version of the green heart. Um, you just assumed. I'm sorry. I guess that's a reasonable statement. Um, uh, I put out a number of pieces. I can get you the female green heart piece if you'd like. No, I, I, only for the mask. Yeah, that's anyway. why I picked it for you, because I knew you would like the mask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so you have uh, a couple of things. You have um, that token, and you'll notice that tokens are uh, they're they're not tall, like a lot of you okay. Know, they're they're flat because it's a really interesting design decision. Yeah, the reason is that this is intended to be like a comic book, like okay. you're right inside a comic book, and so these fit on they fit like panels, right? And so you can see we've kept the border, for example. Right. Oh, that's deliberate. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gutter. Interesting. Um, it is a modular map, and so the idea is like you're walking around what you would imagine Mike and Jerry would put onto uh, a Penny Arcade strip, hmm. right? Um, so, uh, and then when things break the border, it's cool, hmm. right? So, um, so anyway, you have this, you have this pawn, uh, yep. and there are other pawns that I will show in a second. Um, you have, and by the way, literally nothing anyone's looking at is final. I should be clear about this. Of course not. Obviously, the the stuff done in Microsoft Word is obviously not final, but these are also sketches of maps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mike's sketches are better than <laughs> most finished art. Right. Finished art, but, yeah. but it's still not where he'd want it. So um, so you have a character. You have, uh, you'll have a, a play mat. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll have, and the play mat shows uh, some of your abilities, 
and it shows your turn order, and it also shows four slots that you can place cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and everybody has a different one of those. You have a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. uh, the deck of cards, which is on their left there, yep. is um, uh, unique to you. So it has various um, powers and spells and, and whatever it is that character does, action moves, and some, some powering cards, these skill cards. Yours are uh, Spirit and Wood Woes. Uh, are the names of your wood wo wood woes wood wise the, wood, wood woes very different very different <laughs> yes um, uh, so spirit and wood wise are your your uh, skills and somebody else might have spirit and brawn or something like that right um, and then finally you have uh, two trait cards um, everybody gets two dealt randomly out to them so it's like you can play the green heart uh, but you won't necessarily be playing the same green heart as everybody mm -hmm. else so. Um, you are selfless and macabre, as I have often said. <laughs> uh, and so they give you a little bit of flavor text written by Jerry in his own crazy way. Um, so, like, read, let's see what you got. Read. read uh, so, selfless, whatever his name had been, it was now lost. There was only the Thorn Watch. Nice. Uh, and macabre, there was something uh, in the dance, the dance of ending, that drew her like a flame. Ooh. What that means. Yeah. All right, so and you'll notice they have. A, if you look on the back of that of those cards, it says "Hero Die" on it. That'll yeah. be a mechanic that we'll use later. But for the moment, keep them face or uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, text side up. Got it. Okay, so that's that's you, um, uh, and each of you will also give me the judge uh, your momentum card. That's this object right here. So I'm going to pretend that we have a couple other players playing, and we have a sage. And we have a warden, and there, and that's all. Take the momentum cards, uh, and I'll I'll bring them over here for when I use them. Now, what do I get? Well, first thing I've got is a gorgeous map, mm -hmm. um, which is modular. There's lots of different maps. So this is configured to this scenario. It yes. could be configured differently. Absolutely. Okay. And so, um, like for example, let's say we want the heart of the swamp. Right, so that's these four tiles. It doesn't always have to be in a square, by the way. Sometimes it's in a line, sometimes it's in a cross, sometimes okay. whatever. But we might want all of the heart tiles together, which is fantastic, but we want to surround it with a town, right? A town that's built itself on the edge of a swamp. Okay. Well, we might take out these water, water forest tiles. You can see these little symbols that indicate that and put them with civilization tiles around okay. the outside. So we can make whatever we want. Um, uh, so we have that. Um, we ha I have a few other little tricks I can put out. Like I've got some um, of these terrain cards that I can put face down or face up, uh, depending on uh, on an environment. So I might say this area has some animate brambles on it, and uh, because I like you, let's put some blood flies out on your oh, space. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, because you like me. Oh, yeah, everybody loves some extra blood flies. Yeah, they like my blood, apparently. Yeah. Well, sure. Um, so that's great. Yep. Uh, and I have the ability to introduce some, monst some monsters. So uh, at the moment, I have introduced the... Um, <laughs> at the moment, I have introduced a couple. I've introduced... Uh, let's introduce a couple of gliders. Those are these sort of bat things that have been affected by the ebb, and a swamp choir, which is a multi-headed snapping turtle um, that sings an, a terrifying song of doom. Yes. yes. But I mean in a good way. Who taught that thing to sing? Uh, Mama Swamp Choir. <laughs> That's, I mean, not well. I mean, not in a way that anybody would want. I see. So, um, so uh, yeah, that's another thing about working with Mike and Jerry. Like, you could say... This, this is actually really great. You could say, okay, I want a Hydra thing. And they'll come back with, what about a multi-headed snapping turtle that sings? Yeah, yeah, sure. We're calling it the Swamp Choir. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Instant world creation. I just asked for the world to be created. And they go, this is what we did. Is that good? Yes, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, nice resource to have on tap. Indeed. So I have that. I have those guys. The, each of those guys comes with uh, a little card that tells me about them. So I might have uh, a glider pack um, that's just sort of 
my monster manual, but down to a cart. Um, and it has a back that uh, it can get ebb infused, which makes it even better. Um, and I have a swamp fire card. So I get the, I've got some mechanical stuff on my side. Um, I have a little judge uh, tile. So you're a game master. Yeah, in some sense. I mean, I have uh, I have my own goals. Um, okay. So uh, in the same way that the overlord in um, uh, Descent, uh, it's not that I necessarily want to win or beat the beat the party down. It's just that I have things I'm trying to do. Um, <laughs> okay. Right. I'm trying. Sure. To, I'm trying to complete my own activity. Uh, and so I have a resource um, called the ebb, and the ebb is these little tokens here, what will be tokens here, um, that uh, that um, powers up everything I do. Mm -hmm. And you don't want me to get more of this, mm -hmm. but I will. <laughs> and so, um, so. Uh, so I start with some of them, and I use them to buy monsters and to make my attacks better and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. So I'll get a little bit of that. Um, so, um, right. Uh, so I've got, I've got all those things uh, to... So you would have... Oh, the one thing I didn't describe, the most important thing in many ways, is I have a um, storyboards. I have these storyboards. Storyboards are... Uh, tell me the beginning of a story or the end of a story or branches of that story that can go in any number of ways. So let's say I want to do the thing that ends in the swamp choir and I want to start it with some gliders. Well, I have this tile, this story tile, storyboard, which says, here's a nice little story by uh, Jerry. It says, well, actually, I think this one's by Mike. It says, a knot, is, a knot tied in thorns tells you much. This one is the knot of wings, and its magic begs for, begs for swift protection. The village is in chaos. Doz dozens have already been killed by a vicious pack of gliders. The wild look in their eyes conjures memories of another life and a half-forgotten poem. All things, all hungry things are in his thrall. He pipes and beasts do hear heed his call. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, so it tells me what to do. It says, "Give me some glider pack. Give me a glider pack and." Put some villagers on the board that need to be saved. Um, so I'm gonna put some villagers out there, um, and then uh, their goal is to attack and kill the villagers. Um, if you defeat all the gliders, I'll take the swamp choir off the board. If you defeat all the gliders, then you win, and if uh, I kill all the villagers, then I win. Okay. So I do have a goal, right? It's not now. I also care about the story. I care about everybody having a good time but there is nothing in this game that says oh by the way when the players get in trouble you should probably cheat <laughs> right like it's a okay. standard rule of yeah. dungeon mastering right it is a rather controversial rule it does. Yeah. So, some role playing games don't contain that well, rule well I understand uh, I understand but some Certainly people consider not, it rule for zero for example yeah. my friend Luke's game Torchbearer which is basically a, uh, a, a steamroller runs over you for three hours <laughs> Which is fantastic. Very enjoyable. <laughs> it's a Steam, fantastic game. Steamroller. Right? Slowly crushing you. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, but, but yes, the, the Game Master Agency uh, is about uh, achieving the Game Master's goals, not necessarily helping the players along in their story. It is about yeah, gameplay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. And so when we finish that, um, I'll have a number of things that uh, will happen. I can, uh, if the Thorn Watch succeed, what? I'm going to steamroll you. Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> uh, uh, if the Thornwatch succeed, then I go to this next uh, storyboard. Or if I want a branch, I can either follow the tracks to go to, or you can either follow the tracks to go to Signs Importance, or you can rescue the missing villager. Um, uh, and then there's a failure one, too. Failure state one, too. Oh, huh. hunted. That's so, super cool. Yeah, so it's a choose your own adventure style mechanic. Oh. And this was so, like, right, so this is so just to show yeah. a little bit more clearly. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so is it going to be a tent like this? Uh, we don't know. The final we don't know exactly. Or is it going to be a flat card? Like we don't know exactly. I think it's more that um, this is the method that we have for the print and play. Right. Like we know that we can make people present. Oh, sorry. People can print this out and right. play it and like this. It. I see. So, um, but it's so not final materials, but still the concept is really cool, right? Yeah. So, gives you the mission. Yep. Uh, here in the tells little flavor. How, tells you how right. to build the map, tells you the rules. Right. And, and everybody can see that. Right, and then 
But this I love, yeah. the, especially the fact that you have a failure result. Mm -hmm. uh, about so if you can grab the next one there, the hunted, that's the uh, failure one for this mm -hmm. slide, this uh, storyboard. So if uh, that happens, then instead of ever getting to the swamp player, which was your intent mm -hmm. earlier, instead the gliders hunt you down, mm -hmm. right? So now we have a map. Uh, I don't know if anybody can see this, but there's a straight line version. Right, mm -hmm. like you start here, the 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 um, the gliders start behind you, and you have to run to get the villagers to safety. Mm -hmm. Right, and that becomes its own goal. Like right. you had a goal at the beginning to hunt down the snapping turtle thing, but that's irrelevant. We just have to get all the people to safety. Right, because you screwed up the first one. Cool, and right. then but this could be its also be its own individual mission that we could do like that's also true you yeah. and I could, yes you and I could play a 30 minute version of this game where we start with the hunted tile right and it ends with a the end at the bottom oh, so, the, so, the, so there are endpoints to the branches yeah you can these. you can always start with you can always start with a tile uh, a storyboard that ends with the words the end hmm. right so if you just want to play a 30 minute game you just start there Right, I see. If you want to play a story that starts with the singer in the dark, could branch to signs and portents or rescue the villagers, mm -hmm. and if you're doing well, gets you to silence the swamp player, that's a little longer investment of time. Mm -hmm. That's like, you know, um, an hour and 30 minutes, let's mm -hmm. say, or something like that. But, um, but it could end at the point where you screw up the first one, and now you're being hunted, and now you will end here, no matter what. Interesting. Yeah. So, uh, um, so, so wait, even if I succeed, where that's it uh, after hunted. Yeah, hunted is it? Hunted is, it's really fun. It's a great little adventure, but it's a one-off. But yeah. you're you're going to be done because you just got to get the villagers to safety, and then you go, okay, we got them to safety. Let's try that again. Get through the first stage, right. succeed this time. Now we can get on the path to silence the swamp player again. I see. Okay. So well, I imagine um, we'll. We should just skip right to hunted because that's okay. Sure. No, no, no I'm, I'm joking. I'm oh, joking. actually, the only reason we're not going to do that is then I have to. I, I know. I know. I, I'm completely joking. I'm just saying. <laughs> sure. I roll dice very badly. Yeah, so. that's probably fair enough. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's all. The, that's all the parts um, uh, for the moment, anyway. And so, uh, oh, I didn't think I mentioned the dice. Did I say about? We that? have not talked about uh, the dice. There'll be some custom dice in the game. The um, dice are all ten sided. There are two types of the ten sided dice. These are regular ones. They have some check marks, uh, so sometimes you'll get no check marks, sometimes you'll get one check mark, sometimes you'll get two check marks, and also you will get sometime uh, the ebb symbol. Mm -hmm. Now the ebb symbol is also no check marks, so nothing good for you, mm -hmm. but great for me, I get another. Is, is this the ebb or Yeah, no? the, the, round, the little round symbol. I see. Uh, it's great for me. I get another ebb to spend on right. my, my stuff, like more damage for you and more, more, uh, and so forth. So, but um, you sometimes randomly roll bad event happening thing. Where have I seen this before? Mm. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, I, I believe you. You have. Uh, yes. You've been culling from, yes. from your past ideas. It, well, I mean, in some sense, right? I mean, we're we're trying to make um, this whole genre of cooperative games, um, which. I call the big co-op game, other people call other things, right? But the adventure card games and so forth, they've all got sort of a, a little bit of a similar feel, mm -hmm. but they're all mechanically pretty different. Sometimes they'll, you'll see a little bleed from, from Betrayal over here and mm -hmm. a little, little bleed from Pathfinder over there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and obviously Dungeons & Dragons has some impact on it, you know, so forth and so on, right? But cool. I think we've got some unique stuff here. So... Um, uh, no, no, I'm saying it's it's good. It's a good, uh, yeah. you know, it's it's a good design conversation. I don't think you can have a genre without having some things show up, and well, the same thing show up every now and then. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So yeah, it's, it's cool. It's, it's cool. So um, uh, so how do we get started? Oh, I'm sorry. I had one last thing to say about the dice. Okay. Which is there are two types of dice. Yeah. Uh, one is the regular dice, and the other is the hero dice, which only have check marks on them and don't no, have an absolute. No ab. Okay. Have more good check marks, and you get those by doing these little role-playing things. Okay. Right? So if you do something that is particularly selfless, you'll get to flip over that card, and then it says hero die. 
And you, is that a one-off resource? Yeah. Or? And okay. then when you use that, you flip it back over, and then you can do something selfless again at some point. Ah, I see. I see. Right. I so, see. Um, okay. Okay, so let's do some things. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, you are uh, in the uh, in the swamp, and uh, the villagers are are um, have have wandered into the swamp, which is a terrible idea. Yeah. For them. What are they thinking? Yeah. And uh, um, and I, I got my ebb here. I'm ready to go. And you are going to... You see these gliders here? Mm -hmm. They're going to eat these guys. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, here's what I do. I take... Do I have a buddy? Did you give me a buddy? I gave you... I, gave you, I should give you two buddies, actually. Um, I'll give you just one buddy. Uh, that's, <laughs> I can handle it. That's fine. Um, so let's uh, take that. That is... Um, let's see. I have uh, your green heart card. I have a glider momentum card. Um, the glider's momentum card is um, is uh, it uh, comes with comes with having put the gliders on the board. And uh, I'll put out a um, what other thing? I'll put out I'll put out the guard as well. Let me put out the guard. Oh, okay. So it's easy, easy for me to run independently. Um, so the gl the guard, I'll put, so you have a friend, you have a glider, okay. and so forth. Now, we are going to make what's called the momentum track. Mm -hmm. Now the momentum track... Got uh, a lot going on over there. Yeah, it's mostly because I have a very small table going on over here. <laughs> um, so uh, so I take every, every turn, I take those cards, I shuffle them up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I put them out in an order. So it says the guard will go first, and then the green heart, and then the gliders. So I look at my little card that's about the gliders, uh, and I see if it has anything on it that cares. And you look at your card. Oh, you'll need to draw. You'll need to get yourself a hand of five cards. All right, so I, I draw them blank. Should I shuffle, shuffle these? Shuffle them and then draw them, yes. Okay, and you'll want you'll want five of those. Five, not four, five. Five of those, yeah. All right. I should probably get what I don't want off the board. And, and if, by the way, and so you you got two of you, you got three villagers. I'll I'll. Uh, oh, I forgot to add the villagers. Um, sorry. Oh, oh, they get an initiative. They do. They are also in the uh, initiative track because they have things to do as well. So I'm going to reshuffle those. They're going to chop down some trees and haul, haul some lumber back to the village. And well, yeah, or, or, or die. <laughs> those are the other options. That's the other option. Look, see, Greenheart goes first. Yeah. And then the villagers, and then the guard, and oh, sad, sad, sad gliders at the end. Oh, but wait. Hey, guess what? Uh, the gliders have uh, a, um, a momentum bonus. And so they'll just move a little closer. Okay. This is the route. It's the front of the momentum track. This is the edge. Now, in this game, and I realize it might be blocking things over here. Yeah, get those deck boxes out of the way. Yep. Uh, let's get everything out of the way here. So, um, this indicates the order that people will go in. Yep. Okay? So, uh, um, for your, so first thing I'll do is, if nobody else is adjusting the momentum track, which some people can do, um, I will tilt your your green heart card uh, and indicate that it's your turn. Okay. Uh, you then uh, can do whatever is on your um, card, your um, um, playmat here. Okay. Or anything that's in All your right. hand. All right. So my, um, your turn, my turn, right? Yes. So number one, move, ready, and take actions in any order. Take one action, ready any number of cards by playing them uh, face up into the spaces below. You can have four cards ready at a time. And play any number of cards underneath, r underneath ready cards. Uh, uh, sort of like power, oh, to power them. I see. Yeah. Uh, the card must be fully powered to be activated, and then move one space. And then, he, and then number two is return all wound cards to my hand, which we'll get to. Uh, and then draw. Uh, do I draw up to five, you, or you draw till you have five? Draw up to right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm going to start moving. Okay. Right? Totally fine. So. Yep. Uh, so I move one space, and then. I guess See, so. I can't. Any? I can't. I don't play these cards directly, and I play these cards out here. Yeah. So let's, let's take a look at what's in your hand. Tell me what's in. Your hand. Oh 
okay, you cheater. Uh, <laughs> So well, think of them as part of your hand. That's right. Yes. I mean, why can't you be over my? Sh uh, okay. So you have a couple of spirit cards, uh, which will power some things. Yep. You have uh, two abilities that uh, will require some wood wise and some charm. So one of each. So you could power one of these fully right now. Okay. Okay. So you could choose either rally and cry or clear out. Right. Well, I, I clearly I, I clearly want to play clear out at some point. Uh -huh. So then I want to also lay down a spirit and a woodwise. Yeah, and, and, yeah right. and you'll see they have little. Whoops. Uh, you'll see that they have little symbols at the bottom. So you play them essentially like this is awkward. Yes, we will remove that. Okay. Uh, so you play this simply oh, like that. Oh, okay. So, All right. So now that one's fully powered. So wait, so I can actually play like an infinite number of cards to this thing, right? I can... In that you have five in your hand, yes. But but I mean I could then I could reserve this though. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You, could, you don't have to do that this turn. Okay. Uh, and then if you want, by the way, since it, you're going to discard anything, if you want to fire down that one and put the spirit underneath it, you absolutely can. So and then that's not ready to go. You cannot use. But that. if I draw another woodwise, yes. Got it. Okay. Um, so you've moved. You've put a bunch of cards down. You may now. Act, use an action, which is any one of your powers or this clear out. Oh, oh, okay. So, all right. So I play them down here, and then I can I can use them. So th yeah. this isn't my action; is playing into like no. Acting is only causing uh, an action that's on your card, okay. on your sorry, on your playmat, or a fully powered um, card from your playmat. You right. can never play actions. Well, unless they say right. otherwise, you can never play actions directly from your hand. I believe actually you can never play actions. Okay. All right. So, let, let's just start here. Then okay. I, I've prepped this cleared action. So clear out. It's a, it's actually incredibly advantageous for me. Uh, very lucky draw. Um, any allies in your space may move uh, one space. So awesome. I can so help this villager. Uh, fantastic. Uh, so get the, the hell out of there. An ally is either the villager or another one of the Thornwatch. Not you though. You are not your own ally. So you could not use uh, never. Yeah. So <laughs> so <laughs> that's been a proven over your life. Um, so uh, you'll know right at the top. The first thing that happens is you make an attack of two dice. Make an attack of two dice. So regular dice. Yep. Okay. Uh, All right. So, so you have check, two check. check marks. Okay. So let's talk about what happens when you hurt something in the game. Okay. Um, you'll note the glider is sitting here. Mm -hmm. That means move the glider that direction two spaces. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So this system tracks not only initiative, but damage as well. It means that the gliders will go later, and it means they're hurt. So uh, I will try to move it two spaces. Right. One. Oh, wait. There's nowhere else for it to go. It okay. It's now on the edge. So uh, that will stop it from going any further. Okay. okay. So I didn't, I didn't just kill it then by nope, moving it two spaces. Nope, but you have gotten it to the edge. Now, the next attack made by somebody that causes that to get hit will in fact knock it off the edge and kill it. Okay, so it's, there's a threshold, right? So That's I can right. knock it to the edge, yep. uh, and then there has to be a follow-on. Yeah, right. And so some people can attach more than once right. in a turn. That we've, you know, they have cards that allow them to do that, mm -hmm. um, uh, so forth. But at the minimum, it's going to take at least two hits to get that off. Uh, you then discard those cards, mm -hmm. all three of those, uh, and I believe that will be the end of your turn. The, the end of the no, I'm, no, sorry. no, I, I step. Oh yes, I'm sorry. You know, out uh, of the shadows yes. of a great oak tree. Oh yeah. Just, you know, it's as a uh, straight as a trunk, mm -hmm. and just thump my staff on the loam, and it right and has that that great like reverberation that you feel in like a a really like rich forest where you feel it in your feet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that's it. That's it. And my, you know, my eyes flare green. Ooh. You know, and and the yeah, and I sounds, just get the attention sounds... of the, uh, the the creatures. They all just turn, look at me, like they don't know whether to be this, to you know to attack or to be uh, you know afraid. Think, you know what I think that is? That's kind of macabre. Oh, look at that! <laughs> okay, so you can fire that up. You turn that over because I I agree with you that that's macabre. And right, and this terrifies is also though terrifies the villager, right? The villagers like. The villager yeah, doesn't know whether... They don't know, and that's going to show up very quickly. As I'm going to show you exactly why that, that's going to happen. So do, do, they, do they get to move? Uh, they, have move? A, they have a card next. Wait, well, what about the clear out? Any allies? Oh, sorry, yes, you may move. Yes, absolutely, I apologize. Yes, that one can go wherever you want it to go. All right, so... Sorry, get, one space wherever you want to. Get thee behind me? Uh, 
do you think that's the right place for it? I, I don't in the blood flies. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> If that's where you want it to go. I forgot about these pesky blood flies. <laughs> it's pretty blood fly That would also be rather macabre. <laughs> that is actually, it seems like it would be better if you put them there. I think you should put them there. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to. Okay, well. I'm going to try not to be my limit, own worst limits enemy. my sense of your macabre <laughs> Your macabrosity. All right. Okay, so you finished your turn? Yep. You finished all of that? Okay, I, so I believe the next so. next stage. So I didn't get any wounds. No wounds, no problem. And Discard all the rest of your cards you don't have anymore. Okay, and then uh, draw, draw to five. To five. Okay. Great. Okay, so the next thing that happens is the villagers will go. Okay. Oh, you got some new cards for me. Yep. The next thing that happens, so you're completely done. The next thing that happens will the villagers will go. And on the villagers' turn, I have some rules that say what happens to the villagers. So um, on the villagers' turn, the heroes, yeah, the heroes and judge uh, alternate moving one villager pawn one space starting with the judge. Okay. okay? So uh, the this villager... Uh, was compelled by the power of a green-eyed man. And, and this villager particularly thinks that they should follow the will of the green-eyed man. Yes, which is run away. No, that's not what this villager believes. No. This villager instead <laughs> moves into the space with the gliders. You may not move any other villager. You can move this one back in there. Um, I move, so uh, that's what you're going to do. I move this one from here to here. You can move either of these two villagers. And then you're going to move a third. I am. Yeah. <laughs> you will not steal my safe villager from me yet. <laughs> All right. The, but into the brambles we shall go. Okay. Right. So and could you have picked up the villager that I already moved and move it? Or is no. It, it, no. So they each make one. Yeah, okay, great. Okay. Because so so I know you're going to put that villager in the blood flies. I am. <laughs> uh, um, oh, we didn't notice... Uh, Oh, I should have saved clear out. Oh, you know what I didn't notice? Well, uh, I didn't notice my animate brambles. I'm going to use them next time. Um, okay, so uh, oh, it's fine. Uh, okay, so then the guard goes, uh, and I'll just uh, pretend that I'm doing her turn. Um, hit it. Hit so it. let's just make her just hit make it with a your regular, axe. Yeah, just, she's got she's got a. Uh, um, oh, where's the guard? She's right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so the guard. We're, we're very organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guard has a long sword. Uh, she'll discard a. Frost it. She'll yes. She'll discard a um, uh, a brawn to make an attack. Do you know what a longsword is? It's a what? big piece of steel. Yeah. That's going right through your head. Would you like to roll for the guard? <laughs> you have succeeded. You have a. You have a. Uh, Check. And that means you hit the glider when it's on the edge. You may choose one of these gliders to remove. <laughs> yeah, feel free. No. All right. So this one's gone. Right. <laughs> I have been glad I have been I have been long sorted, long sorted. Um, okay, so that the guard is gone, but now the glider gets to go. Okay, okay. so um, when a monster, when this monster specifically, I need is a glider hurt, murder yes, face. It moves. A step. Right. But when this monster, that's one of its abilities. Is when it moves. Well, yeah. Oh, when it's hurt. Yeah. When when it, when one of its friends dies. Got it. It goes. Oh, and all the rest of the gliders go. I'm going to move forward. It doesn't really matter because everybody else is gone. Glider goes. Uh, the glider's attack is a bite or a swoop. Um, one here on the okay. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to swoop. Yeah. Let's get this guy. Okay. So I can attack you guys. So, right. So, the, so yeah. but your mission objective is villagers. So, right. um, so forget us. Yeah. I think but, but it's interesting. Like, tactically, the guards on the edge... Like, I'm just saying, you know, from a strategy standpoint, wouldn't you want to eliminate my companion? Uh, it's it's going to be difficult for me to do that in one shot. Well, don't you all just need to get one check mark to knock her off? No, no, no. You don't take damage that way. I'll show you how you take. Damage. Oh, <laughs> you take damage in a different way. Okay, fair enough. I'm a little well, scared. This one point, I, instead of instead of uh, attacking the easy prey of the villagers, I will attack. Um, well, I will attack you because I can't. Um, so, uh, and we'll show how that works. But if you were playing to win the scenario, you would attack the villagers. Yes. But for the purposes of demonstration, yeah, 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 yeah. got yeah. it. I'll okay. get I'll get these villagers. I feel good about that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this glider instead um, is uh, would normally swoop into this space, attack the villager, and because of swoop allows them to move back. But not going to do that. Uh, don't like that you killed my buddy. Okay. So come over, pound on you. Um, 
So I'm going to just roll using my bite ability. Um, now I have the pack hunter ability, which is gives me an extra die for each other glider pawn in this glider space. Sad face, you killed my other friend. Long sorted it. So, um, so I'm going to roll uh, just a regular attack. And oh look, ah. three check marks. Let me tell you what three check marks means. <laughs> I have this stack of cards, which I had not mentioned before, called wound cards. And I'm just going to give them to you. Three of them. Oh, thank you. They're your present. They go right on your deck. Thank you so much. Yep. That's, and so this great uh, And so this this turn would be over. Um, <laughs> let's say uh, something caused you to shuffle your deck. You'd shuffle those in. To into the, my main draw into deck. Into your main draw or, deck. Or, or Sorry, I didn't mean hand. to put it on your hand. I meant put it on your okay, deck. Okay, so. Uh, right. So you'd shuffle those together, and let's say you were to draw a couple of wound cards. Well, I'm sorry. They're, they're dead cards. Dead cards to you. Yeah. yeah. So I can't, I can't play them into... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? So character. my goal okay. is to fill up your hand and with, with all these so dead what, cards. So, I mean, that seems like a, a lot of wounds to fill up this whole deck. Oh, I'll do it. Um, <laughs> the, the the whole lot of wounds. This is a, a couple of gliders isn't one thing, but the Swamp Choir goes around just meeting out wounds after wounds after mm -hmm. wounds. Uh, I win in two ways. You win in one way. You complete the objective. Mm -hmm. um, you win by I, eliminating me or I, completing I, your I objective. I win by completing my own objective or eliminating this deck of cards. Oh, we're handing out all the wounds. If I can just get rid of all these. Oh, by the way, did I mention I can spend ebb to add to the amount of wounds that I No. Get? Oh, wait, so you could have just given me like nine I could have, wounds. in that last one, I could have given you an extra wound. Is it just just one, or could you yes. just like keep? Uh, it, I'm only allowed to do that once each time I okay. do damage. But, so. but, but uh, You're although, a jerk. Yes, but I'm a jerk. And so, and by the way, this deck, uh, I currently have all the wounds in my hand. But really, so does but that... let me say one thing here. Really, actually, this wound deck would be 20 cards for a two-player game. Okay, right. I was going to say. So, so I'm already uh, one-fifth of the way ah, to victory. I see. Just with one attack. Okay. That's why this game can, can go very quickly, right? Because I can burn out. As, right. Uh, uh, and so, yes. So, so, so on your roll, nothing good can happen to me. Oh, God, no. <laughs> why, would I, why would I ever roll dice to make something good happen just, just checking. It's not really a thing. Okay. So, um, so anyway, so uh, that's how a turn works. And then you pick up all the momentum cards, you shuffle them out again. And that has a really interesting effect because um, uh, you have these micro-tactical yeah. turns, right? You're like In the first turn, well, you let, might... Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's see, just show, show them by show example. Them, yeah. like what, so now, so that's the end of this turn. Right, I pick so, these up. Uh, everybody's gone. I shuffle them again, and now uh, I'm gonna fake this because I want to show you. <laughs> oh, actually, I got exactly what I wanted. That's okay. awesome. I was like, let me now rearrange these to be exactly like this. Yeah, Mike is a magical cheater. <laughs> yeah, I am, I'm not a wizard though. <laughs> uh, so it's just a uh, card chart. Look at the glider all the way up here. Right. Right. You're like, oh gosh. What that... happens to its bonus to move up if it's all? It, it's all right. It okay. Matter. But right. but let's say but but this looks harder now. Mm -hmm. Right now, you have to do a lot of activity to get rid of that glider, mm -hmm. but the villagers are over here. Mm -hmm. The glider is going first, and it's going to just go, dunk, kill, boom. Right, like there's just nothing you can do to stop that unless mm -hmm. you can. Mo uh, uh, unless change. I had some kind of interrupt. That's right. You have a momentum track alteration, like the sage is really good at that. Right. That just goes. No, we're going to put the green heart first. Right. And so now you have a different problem than you had last time. Last time the villagers were pretty much safe. It was hard for me to knock them off the mm -hmm. edge, so I didn't really feel like that was a worthwhile use of my time. Uh, I, I wanted to give you wounds rather than attack the villagers. Now I'm just going to attack the villagers. Right. Right. And now you're like, oh god, we got to make sure we get the villagers away from here, like get them out of the space, that the, the you know, and so forth and so on. So it's just every turn feels really different. Instead of playing like one game, you're playing a bunch of five minute games, hmm. which is pretty neat. Uh, Super cool. Yep, that's pretty much how it works. Um, there's a lot more to the variety that's in these in the print and play. We only give you um, four tiles, mostly because we've only uh, written and laid out four of the tiles, um, but uh, for the storyboards. But <laughs> but we have a lot more coming. We have we have drafts of them and so forth. Uh, right. But yeah, this what we just did totally playable. Just printed out has all the stuff in it. It's awesome. I printed and cut it out. Uh, super cool. So what are you doing with the game now? 
Well, I don't know if you know, but um, yesterday we launched a Kickstarter for it. Oh. Yeah, were you there? Oh, is that what that was? Were, were you there? Um, yeah, it, I believe you dragged me out on stage. I believe it went perfectly. It went just flawlessly. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I did not have to sprint off of stage to troubleshoot something. No, that's not a thing that happened. Not a thing no. that happened, no. So yeah, it was a, uh, yesterday Mike launched this project uh, on Kickstarter. We d- uh, did it in front of the main stage here at Penny Arcade. There were some hiccups. There were a few. There were some, some bumps. Um, it but was, five minutes later. Yeah, five minutes later, everything was good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, now you've more than doubled your goal yeah, at this it, point. Yeah, it went great out of the gate. I mean, one of the great things about doing this is we, we love our, our Penny Arcade fans. We love our Twitch fans. Twitch has been really good for us, and so uh, for Penny Arcade especially. And so a lot of people were watching that completely flawless launch uh, live, right. and so, uh, and and you know, it was kind of in character that there were, you know, that that's kind of we kind of you know, uh, uh, joking around on stage, and so people were like, okay, haha, funny. No wait, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was actually a real problem. But uh, uh, we launched it; it went great. Um, we funded, I think, um, it took you about six hours. So yeah, five or six hours. Yep, uh, four hours, something like that. Uh, I'm hearing it was less than that. It was less than the that. Peanut four, four hours long. Uh, and then now I uh, woke up this morning and we doubled the goal. Um, we're already uh, close to, if not at the point where this is our second most successful Kickstarter campaign because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure we've passed the Maze of Games by now, um, mm. passed the Maze of Games audiobook, passed the Ninth World. Um, Still a ways to go, and I don't know if we will to get to apocryphal Apocryphal, level. Yeah, Yeah. but um, but uh, yeah, it's been really great. Uh, I've gotten a lot of congratulations, Um, and uh, the cool thing here at PAX West is that people are playing the game on their own for the first time. Mm -hmm. We're not standing over them; we're just giving them the game and saying, "Play it," and they're coming back. There's a cool thing that we're doing. Uh, Marie and the others came up with this amazing idea of. Uh, putting birch trees in our booth. Yeah. And so people are tying knots on the birch tree to summon the thorn watch. Super cool. And when they uh, succeed in playing a scenario, they get the knot of wings, which is a, a Chinese good luck knot on their arm that they can wear around. And, and they get a bonus when playing it. They mm-hmm. get to start with a hero die oh. in play because the knots actually mean something in this game. Right. So anyway, so that's, that's, how the, that's how it's gone. Uh, and so what do you plan for the next uh, 29 days? Going to sleep. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to sleep <laughs> while your Kickstarter's oh, okay. live. Uh, what do we have plans? Um, well, we have a lot of other things we'd really like to do with the game. Mm-hmm. We'd, we'd love to expand it in some meaningful ways. Um, we're rolling that out. Uh, we, we want this to be the prettiest, most involving game anybody's ever seen. And so it's that a requires point. a lot of money. To do, mm-hmm. and hopefully people will see what we want to do and, and uh, kick us a one or two dollars to get us there. Great. Well, thanks so much for showing me the game. I'm really excited. Thanks. I for can't everything. wait to see what final form it takes. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. And thanks Kickstarter for everything. Thanks Kickstarter fans who've been fantastic to us um, over the years now. Now I guess we're kind of veterans. You are indeed. Yeah, yes. and uh, it still feels everything still feels brand new. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, new I mean, things go wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. So so, but um, yeah. Uh, people people are going to uh, download the game. They're going to tell us what they think about it. They're going to mm-hmm. tell us what they think of the the rewards that we have, like the pin and the the wood box and and all these things. And um, and hopefully it'll continue to go well. Can't wait to see what happens. Thank you, man. My pleasure. All right.